Hello, beautiful soul. How are you? Coffee and crystals or crystals and coffee. <laughs> All right. While we're waiting, hopefully, for someone to join us today, this morning, as in right now. And this is being recorded so that we'll have access to this um, way after the live and the replay within our group. So, um, <laughs> how are we going to work this today? Let me know that you're here and I'm getting over my stage fright for starting something new. You would think that with everything that I've been doing, all of the lives that I've been doing over the last couple of years. Hey, Annalie, nice to see you, gorgeous. Miss seeing you at the psychic fairs. Looks like June is also canceled. Anyway, what came to mind when I asked my own inner crystal goddess what to start with or to share with you today while we were getting started is a little bit about crystal wands. And there are a lot of wands out there that have double terminations, right? So you want to be careful. You want to have a, a point. You can use a tower. Okay, it's flat on the bottom, so it's self-standing, not on my finger, but self-standing. And this is iolite. Um, and this happens to be, let me put the other two down for a second. This is a double. You could call this double terminated or a twin point. And actually, there's three. I'm not begin to tell. There's one here, one there, and then the larger point. And then we have what I've learned, I think, in the last six months to a year, that these on the sides here are called record keepers. I think you can see that in the, there we go. See the small babies on the side? These are record keepers. So this is an incredibly powerful piece. Okay. And some of them, I should have gotten out the Lemurian seed crystal to show you the difference. Anyway, so this one, I think you can see some, let's see. See if you can see the striations. So you see the striations, the reflection in the color there or the light. This does not mean that it is a Lemurian seed crystal. A Lemurian seed crystal, Oh, I do have one, just a second. Okay. okay, let me show you the difference in the striations. See these striations? This is a Lemurian seed crystal. That is natural. These are not human carved. This one, the striations are, let's see if we can get back into the light here that you can actually see the difference. Well, you can't see them very clearly, but when you have one in your hand or looking at it closely, let's see, maybe this side, you may be in the light, you can see a little bit. So this one was taken from a bigger cluster or off a wall in some cave somewhere. So you can see the difference right away. This is a Lemurian seed crystal, and it has the striations on nearly every facet of every side. This one happens to have a rainbow prism. I mean, you can see it in this light right in the center there. This is an incredibly powerful clear quartz. Okay, you can kind of see the striations here, but that does not make it a Lemurian seed crystal. So back to the part about wands <laughs> if you have a wand and they're they seem to be pretty popular a wand that has a point or a termination on the on the end this is one you want to be very careful with you can use it but use it so that the ends the pointed the terminations are away from you because, and I'm gonna put my hand in front of it because if you're using it, I'll put it to the side so it doesn't zap anybody. If you're using it during healing work, 
not only is energy coming in, you know, in through you, you're channeling the energy from your own guides, from whether you're doing Reiki or any other energy healing modality. And if you're using crystals, then this point is a direct, it, it's like a laser focus. And this is a Vogel style wand, incredibly, this is laser um, created as far, uh, shaped, not created, laser created, and it is inclusion free. So anyway, this makes it very, very powerful, very focused energy. And so it's like this rainbow moonstone. Okay, and it's good that it has a flat end or a rounded end so that the energy doesn't come back into you because energy travels both directions, right? So if you're working on a client, yourself or a friend, what you're doing is actually um, pulling their energy that you are helping to dissipate, eliminate, and remove back into you. And as a person who is already sensitive to energy, you're already bringing in energy, right? And you're already kind of on the surface or on the outside of your own protective bubble, picking up the energy. So why in the world would you intentionally have something that's double terminated, as in pointy, okay? So let's pretend that this is, <laughs> so you would have that. Can you see how the energy would travel back and forth? And you would get double zapped. Don't do it. All right, let me see. I think it's gonna be easier if I do it this way. Um, so, yeah. So still working out the tech, techie stuff, right? <laughs> Seeing how we're going to be going here. Are there any questions? Please do let me know that you're here. Um, we can also talk about chakras and angels. We're calling it crystals and coffee because that's the primary focus of this Facebook group. However, we have license or permission from whomever to talk about other things. Again, this is for y'all and we're gonna do this for a couple of weeks to see how it goes. And if y'all are really interested in joining me every week at the same time. So what else would you like to know about? That's the mini lesson about crystal wands for today or this week. We had a question from, um, right, Deanna a couple days ago. About Archangel Gabriel and the healing crystals that he works with or you can work with to add to his energy with yours. So I'm going to read <laughs> the response that I already shared. And the crystals to work with the healing angel are green fluorite, green tourmaline, aventurine, which is green, pink amethyst, carborundum, because those two are both master healing crystals. Shungite is also a master healer. Red aura amethyst, blue apatite, green apophyllite, malachite, and azurite malachite as well. So, oh hey, good morning, Tisa. Uh, Tissa, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you for being here and saying hello. What else? Do you understand anything or everything about the wands themselves? Now these are towers and I consider this a big point or a crystal point, yet you can use these and I actually use this one in my crystal healing sessions and I use this one as well. This is my private one or my personal one. 
it's a Vogel crystal and they really help to dig out energies um, and to put and to when you remove energy you want to fill it with something more personal so let's see all right since y'all are not asking me any questions <laughs> i am asking my guides what else to share with you so how about we work with the crown chakra a little bit and that's what iolite can do as well as um let's see pink amethyst purple amethyst blue appetite apophyllite more so the white than the green however the green apophyllite if it has little bits of clear quartz help to amplify the energies help to raise it up right thank you kunzite um god there's what sujolite oh that's fabulous it's a deep indigo bluish uh purple purpley blue bluish purple it is very high end but if you can get a piece you don't it's one of those you don't need a very big piece of some of the, the some of the others you need a larger piece because if you have something this little bitty you need to have four or five or six of them so that it doesn't overwork and there are some beautiful souls who think all they have to do is get a little piece and it's going to move mountains no invest in what you can manage and so if you have something that's this small because that's what your budget allows then get a piece of clear quartz a point doesn't have to be this big all right <laughs> it can be let's see about the size of this little selenite piece this is a selenite blade or a finger so if you have a smaller crystal yep yeah, okay i can use carnelian as an example so this is a decent size of carnelian i'll put it in my hand so you can see it's not teeny tiny a little bit bigger would be better so if you have two this size or you have this size then you can put a piece of um, clear quartz and this is selenite but imagine it's clear quartz clear quartz magnifies the energies of all other crystals by 10. so if you put something like this together whether you have rose quartz a small tumble of um, amethyst or carnelian anything else you put this together and you're going to magnify the energies in a positive way the smaller the piece the harder it has to work the longer it has to take or the longer it takes to help you so let me go back into the group and see how we're doing uh let's see oh all right let me put my glasses on because we do have a question and i love questions absolutely love questions okay okay tisa says she's not entirely familiar with crystals getting trying to get more educated on them well then it's a good thing beautiful that you are here for coffee and crystals or crystals and coffee so what more would you like to know they help to raise your vibration help you heal your heart chakra, balance your chakras. Um, your cho seven major chakras are your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, and your um, solar plexus, which is right about, well, mine is at my navel. Some people, most people think it's above, that's fine. Then the sacral is in between the navel area and your groin, the sacral chakra. And then your root chakra. A lot of people say the base of the spine because that's more socially acceptable. However, the, the root is at your groin. So at the top of your head for your crown chakra, the chakra is so. So that it's like a funnel, okay? So yeah, a funnel. So the energy comes through from source, your guide, spirit guides, ascended masters, um, the angelic realm and comes in through okay so your root chakra is the opposite because the wider part is facing mother earth to help bring that you're you're giving off energy you're, you're flowing or grounding energy and then bringing it up from mother earth for healing and transmutation so the crystals can help you with that different ones do different things 
okay? <laughs> and let's see, they, crystals can help you focus your intentions. They can help you raise your vibration, do the healing work, manifest your desires, attract more clients, whether you are working for someone else or yourself, um, help to release karma, past life experiences. And if you're not really sold on past lives as in other realms or other time frames, you can work on past experiences in this lifetime. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so that's kind of basically it in a nutshell. All right, and you have a salt lamp and it was sweating while it was on. The salt lamp <clears throat> depends on the humidity. I have a salt lamp, it has never sweated. That doesn't mean it's bad. It, a salt lamp is made of Himalaya pink salt, it's this formation, and there is some controversy as to whether it really does anything or not, but Himalaya salt is one of the ingredients that I use in, or it's in one of the shower gels that I use every day to clear off the energy from my body, because your body is a magnet for energies, period, positive and negative. Pink Himalaya salt lamps help to attract unwanted energies that are not of high vibe or of love vibration, and it transmutes it. It's kind of like this, um, <clears throat> something to do with ions, which gets a little bit on the scientific side, and I prefer to stay on the metaphysical side so that I can stay open to channeling, if that makes sense. The pink Himalayan salt lamps help to raise the vibration to clear the energy out from your physical environment. So if you have one near your desk or even at your nightstand, then you can turn it on, plug it in, whatever, and it will help to balance out the energies in your home. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see, what else? All right, I'll wait another moment or two and see if anything else comes in. Otherwise, I think this is a wrap for today. Okay, let me just refresh. And if y'all are watching this as a replay, Please, <clears throat> good, I'm glad that helps, Tisa. If you have any questions, then pop them down here in the comments and I'll come back round like we did last time, all right? So thank you for being here. And, oh, good, Annalie, what can you use for better meditating? If you're asking about a specific crystal, you can use selenite, I don't have a big piece right on, oh, I have some, uh, you can use a piece of selenite as a palm stone or a small sphere. Um, you can, any crystal, mineral, or stone that you're attracted to in your collection will help. More specifically, selenite, right, amazonite, amethyst, especially the purple, um, clear quartz, Uh, let's see, grounding, so carnelian or red jasper, citrine, those are for your physical chakras because that will help to declutter the mind. If you have kyanite, that's blue kyanite, so here's a piece. This is from my personal collection, and it happens to have some pyrite and mica on it. Does it have to be this big? No, it could be about that size. So maybe a fourth of this size or a third. And you could either hold it in your hand or you can have it near you while you're meditating. 
And that goes for any of the crystals, minerals, or stones that you have. This is a piece of crystal cola that I brought to put near me. This one is um, tumbled or polished. So you can see it because I want it to be clear, to have some clarity and to help me speak. <laughs> you know, doing lives by myself and doing feature videos, I'm really used to doing that. Doing a live Q&A or crystals and coffee, um, getting used to it. So I know it shouldn't be that much different, right? So Crystal Cola can help with your throat chakra. Smoky Quartz is a good one, right? Thank you. Let's see. Rose Quartz. Excellent. Rose Quartz is fabulous for unconditional love energies as well as helping you to feel a higher vibration while you are meditating, which is incredible. All right. So anything else, ladies, since you are the ones who are here? And thank you for being here. Otherwise, this would have been a very short, one-sided crystals and coffee virtual chat this morning. Okay, I'm just making sure. Excellent. All righty then. Thank you. And if something else comes up, please pop it in the comments and I will be back around in a bit. So you're welcome. Clear Quartz. Uh, a pendulum is really tiny, so not exactly. A pendulum is going to have a point that is about so, or even if it's that, a pendulum has a specific purpose. So no, you can't really, you can't really use a pendulum to help you meditate. Not in this instance, okay? And you're welcome. All right. See y'all next time. And thank you so much for being here.